Hi, I'm Terry Waldo, a uh, pianist and historian and performer and many other things. And I've been asked to uh, give you a little bit of information on uh, some of the basics of our jazz tradition. And I think really to start out, we need to know about ragtime, which was really at the root of all of our jazz music. Jazz was, in my mind, really a, a form of ragtime. It was the way that uh, New Orleans musicians started playing ragtime, but ragtime was really the first one. And I'm going to play for you the, the quintessential ragtime piece written by that great master, Scott Joplin, who's the guy who uh, really made popular ragtime in a, in, a, in a great long time since. He had a hit on his hands in 1899, and that was with a piece called The Maple Leaf Rag. And the Maple Leaf Rag has continued to, to this day to be maybe the quintessential rag. And when I say rag, a rag is a march that is syncopated. And syncopation is really the essence of ragtime. And uh, the, the march was the popular form of music uh, in the 1800s. John Philip Sousa was really the man. Uh, he toured the country and, and all the little towns had marching bands and so forth. And that was, that was really an important form of popular music. So the first rags were actually called marches. And Scott Joplin came up with this piece that is perfect in every way for ragtime. So I will play that for you and then give you an idea of, of what it contains. <laughs> So that's the maple leaf. Actually, I added a chorus at the end. I took the beginning and put it on the end just to round it out and put a little cornball ending on it, tag on it. But the original piece of music is in the same form as John Philip Sousa's marches. And basically that is, you've got four strains, and uh, that is the A strain, this one. 
and that's repeated once, so that's A, A, and then you've got a B section, that's repeated once, so it's, it's A, A, B, B, and then you go back to the A strain again, and uh, then we go into the D strain, which is what they used to call the trio, and the marches had a trio. It adds a flat to the key signature ordinarily, and then, so that's uh, so that goes into four, uh, actually five flats. It starts out in A flat, and then it goes into D flat for a section. And then the last section starts out on a D flat chord, but it's actually back into the original key. Back into A flat, and that would end it ordinarily, except we put a tag on. Now, I knew. Uh, some people who were connected with Scott Joplin who said that in practice you might repeat any section any number of times and you could play it as many times as you wanted to to make it come out right. So uh, the, this idea that it has to be played exactly in the form wasn't even true with Scott Joplin. And there's also the, the business about people talk about uh, all ragtime has to be played slowly which is a, a statement that Scott Joplin put on some of his pieces of music. But as we said, they're marches. And when you think about a march, that's a pretty bright tempo. And indeed, if you hear the recordings that were made during Scott Joplin's lifetime, the Maple Leaf Rag was the first one of, of his pieces to be recorded by the Marine Band, incidentally. Um, you find that they were in pretty brisk tempos compared to, to what happened to them in the 70s when, when we started uh, inflecting them to death uh, with Juilliard graduates playing them oh so carefully and so beautifully. But they were, they were hot music and they were, it was meant originally to get your heart going. So that's, that's a rag. Now, uh, the other thing uh, was two rag and that's a that's a different thing and two rag means that you play in ragtime style and the old piano players could take any piece of music and turn it into ragtime by playing it with that style now what's ragtime well the essence of ragtime is that continuous syncopation that is putting the beat not on the one and three but on the off beats so you have so the, you know, the the right the right hand would be putting in those generally, but putting in those accents, and the left hand would be playing that that straight march. Now to rag a tune, let's take a tune like um, "Old Frivolous Sal" might have been done. I know that was done in New Orleans and different places. This was an old uh, tearjerker from around the turn of the century, and it was a waltz. Joe, the bartender from the Jackie Gleason program, you know, used to sing this. style. Now the early bands, uh, including uh, the, the original Creole Jazz Band, which was the first band to tour the United States playing jazz out of New Orleans, the Creole Jazz with uh, Freddie Keppard playing trumpet, they were called a ragtime band. Now the other uh, great composer that I think who, who, who was uh, every bit as important as Scott Joplin was my piano teacher, a guy named Eubie Blake. 
who came out of uh, Baltimore. He was born in 1887, probably. He said he was born in 1883. I'm not sure if it was 83 or 87. But anyway, he lived to be close to 100 years old, if not 100. And I was his student. And I got to learn ragtime from him. Now, the thing about Yubi Blake was, he came up at a time when ragtime was just being invented, and he was able to be at the center with all of these musicians who were, who were inventing ragtime, mostly black musicians who were touring the country, uh, playing in uh, honky-tonks, houses of ill repute, and really inventing the style, and Yubi was right there for that. Then he went into to vaudeville, uh, and then he came to, he came to New York, uh, he worked with uh, James Reese Europe. He ended up writing the music for the first all-black Broadway show in 1921, and he kept living. And he taught uh, many other piano players, and then he was still going in the 70s, and he started the Ragtime Revival. And uh, talking to U.B. Blake was, was like uh, if you were doing research on the Bible and you had Moses to interview. So I had you would like to interview on Ragtime. He knew Scott Joplin. He showed me how Scott Joplin actually played the piano. He also knew Jelly Roll Morton. He, knew, he taught James P. Johnson, and he taught Lucky Roberts, and, and Duke Ellington also, all those people. So I'm going to get you, give you his, what became a famous piece of music a little bit later. He composed this in 1899, and it was always considered too difficult for anybody to play. So uh, it wasn't written down really until the uh, 70s, and I, I uh, transcribed a folio of Yubi's rags, including this piece of music, which is, came to be known as the Charleston rag. It had various names, uh, including S Sounds of Africa at one point when he recorded it in 1921, but it didn't come out until the 70s when we put this book together and I actually transcribed the way he, he actually played the thing. And you'll notice, it's not like the Scott Joplin rags, and you know Scott Joplin, we rarely go further than an octave in the left hands, we, uh, or, or right hands either. But you'll notice in U.B. Blake, you'll see him doing a little bit more of a stretch. Sometimes, sometimes in the left hand and right hand he'll do not just an octave, which is eight notes, but two more notes, a tenth, and then it's also full of other tricks including sliding all over the notes and playing, and he's, and he's got a boogie-woogie thing in there. So he, this is typical of, of the East Coast guys. They were more showbiz piano players, and so you'll find that those guys did a lot more of that. And this, this was his showbiz. It's, it's, it's from 1899, uh, and it's, you'll notice it's in uh, six flats, actually which I found difficult to transcribe, having been used to starting on the white keys. And, and uh, so that's all the black keys on the piano, plus one more someplace. And Yubi used to joke, he said, well, we, we wrote it on the black keys because my people uh, were afraid to play on the white keys at that time. <laughs> that's Yubi's joke, not mine. <laughs> Thank you. 
And that's ragtime.